Hello race fans, today we have the Mini GT number 489 which is a representation of the Lotus 78 number 5 the 1977 presentation car. Okay, let's see, approved by Team Lotus and TSM model is the parent company of Mini GT. It's interesting that Team Lotus doesn't have a logo. <laughs> or why not just have a Lotus logo? Oh, because Lotus is, I think, last I checked, owned by Proton, a Malaysian company. Uh, so maybe the Lotus Racing Team is not Lotus Cars. But please correct me if I'm wrong, because I always am. I cannot get this plastic off. I don't know why. Let's try that way. Come on. Seriously. do keep my packaging for these little mini GTs because they're small enough. Alright, so inside we got like a three-quarter blister which keeps us from getting scratched up from the cardboard. And it's very nice. Okay. So in this car ran in the 1977 and 1978 seasons. Uh, it got five wins in 77, a few wins in 78. In 78, it was uh, this, I think, in the successor may have come in that year, but uh, Mario Andretti and Lotus won the championships in 1978. Okay. This car is quite historic because it's the first Formula One car to use ground effects, meaning like the bottom is shaped like a wing, uh, sucking it to the ground. And uh, another innovation was they used rubber skirts on the side to trap that high velocity air that was sucking into the ground and also the radiators are on the top side venting the hot air out which would create even more downforce. Uh, the thing had an aluminum frame and fiberglass panels. Uh, it was powered by the Ford Cosworth DFV, very popular engine, around 500 horsepower, 400 to 500 plus depending on what they did. In fact, uh, there's so much downforce in this car handled great on slow tracks and tight tracks, but on the high speed tracks, it, it lost out to the other companies because uh, they were they didn't have as much downforce, so they could actually go faster. It wasn't until they replaced the rear wing, made it narrower, that uh, the the Lotus did did better. This uh, thing only weighed like 590 kilos, so that's very lightweight. And then it also had three tanks, fuel tanks, one in the behind the seat and then two on the sides. So the side pods could be uh, adjusted so they could keep more fuel on one side versus the other to help on the turns, supposedly. This is all Wikipedia, so it could all be wrong. All right, let's leave it at that and go over, over the model here. Let's start with the front wheel. So the Goodyear looks pretty good as far as the printing goes. It's actually round. And then, unfortunately, there's no air passing between the spokes. I would have liked to have seen that. It's got some perimeter bolts, a center cap, and the gold spokes. All right. So the printing sponsorship here is nice. It's actually a paint. It's not, it's not a decal. So this is very good. I don't know why more expensive brands always use decals when Mini GT can do it right for less money. So... All right, let's continue on the back. Yeah, nice rounded tires here and nice details on this rear wheel, All right? Yeah, still gold, silver, and the perimeter bolts. Uh, before I forget, it's a silent runner. It's very smooth. These are probably the best toy 64 scale cars out there. I mean, you can actually roll it, play with it, but they look like very similar to the real photographs, so you can decide for yourself if they look close to the photographs. All right, you'll also notice this black paint is pretty good. Uh, there's not much orange peel. Um, yeah, there's no, you know, like Mattel-like gouges in the castings, so it looks pretty smooth. I mean, black is probably the most difficult color to paint nicely because it shows all the scratches and undulations and stuff like that, right, under this high uh, intensity LED lamp I have here, my photo booth. 
All right, well, the Valvoline and the pinstriping, number five, uh, JPS, that's a tobacco company, cigarettes. This little silver here, I don't know if that was a radiator there, but it's got strikes as if it was. And then you'll see, well, you can see there is a steel axle holding these wheels together. You can see the chamfer of the tires. I guess that's all right. Yeah, seems all right. And then you'll also see there's actually treads on these things. So they, don't, they may not match the photos I pulled up, but they do match the photos of the Tyrell P34 I reviewed. So I have a suspicion uh, these could be the same tires from that, that model as well. All right, uh, let's see. Some sort of silver in there. Maybe probably the radiator. And then so the hot air would come out here. Unfortunately, there's no strakes. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't mold any sort of strakes like a radiator has. I think it could have been done. I mean, they obviously did it there. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay, so that uh, hot air vents out and goes there. So this must be a fuel filler. Some sort of rivet marks, it looks like. And then they actually printed Ford on the, the cam covers. So that's pretty impressive. And then uh, you have the ignition wires and then silver or chrome-like uh, intake stacks. And feeding that is a ram air system up here. And this is pretty deep, this, this actual vent. I don't know if it goes all the way. No, I think it's stopping right there, but that's a pretty deep vent, so very cool. All right, some sort of roll hoop here. Seems to be a separate piece. And there's a white seat, okay. Very glossy white seat. The steering wheel looks good. Oh, open spokes, three gauges it looks like. I think that could be silver in there, the, the gauges. So that's nice. I would have to suspect these are probably mirrors, but there's no silver paint, but that's fine. I'd rather see it on the, the gold pinstriping than there. All right, a uh, whole lot of rear suspension and frame details. Silver, black, this blue canister what would that be it's almost like a fast and furious nitrous oxide tank or something i don't know please leave a comment if you know what that is okay and then i don't know i have a suspicion this is a sway bar okay the wing is a little bit loose but nicely printed jps livery there is there anything on the bottom side no there's not two struts painted aluminum okay exhaust tips nice and thin there's a depression there Right, uh, and then yes, you can see how this is a wing, right? It's tapering off. It's an upside down wing. There's three screws holding this thing together. So if, uh, I don't know why you'd want to open something like this up, but you could. And unfortunately, as always, or almost all the time, it doesn't tell you what the car is. There's plenty of room for them to mold in Lotus 78. I don't know why they're so lazy and don't do that. They they clearly don't mind putting this text in, but it wouldn't cost any more money. They would actually save money if they put the text as a recess. It would it would take less metal, right? But they just leave it blank. It's so strange this company. Everything else that they do though is fantastic. It seems. Uh, I guess the only criticism I have it would have been nice to have air passing between those spokes. I think it could be done because these are not I don't think these have an age rating is there an age rating on these things like Hot Wheels says oh well it is an age rated product for ages 14 and up I don't know if a 14 year old maybe they they have to consider that to be durable and maybe that's why the wheels are solid but not sure not sure okay well let me get a few other uh, Lotus cars up here uh, the three race cars I'm going to pull out are by Kyosho. This first one is a Lotus 81 from 1980. So actually that would come after. I'm actually going to put, I'm going to put these in chronological order. The next one is the 1981 Lotus 88. I think that's what it says on the bottom of that thing. And then the last one is the Lotus 102 which raced between 1990 and 92. 
So what's nice about Kyosho is they tell you what the car is. I, I could never tell you what those cars were had it not been printed on the bottom of the, you know, the molded bottom base. <sighs> All right, well, you can see, you know, the newer car is wider and has a longer wheelbase, it looks like. F1 rules are always changing. It's quite interesting, this has no front wing. Yeah, I guess it's just all ground effects uh, as far as the f keeping the front end down. You see, look at this. The Kyosho uh, the silver, but it has tiny grooves in those radiators. So, yeah, it would have been nice to have that in the, the Mini GT as well. You know what, I'm going to remove these and just put some road cars up because I like this. I like Lotus as a car company. And so an early one would be the good old uh, Lotus 7. This is by Kyosho. People club race those even today because they're very light, they're very nimble, if not a, a death machine on the roads. And then here's a brand that no longer exists sadly. The Yao Modellini or JTB Motivations or Forza SPA. <laughs> I don't know who really made this, but this is a Lotus 11, I guess from 1955 to 1958. So uh, I think it's a popular club racer as well. There might even be replicas of, I'm sure there are replicas of both of those you can buy today if you want to do some club racing. And then the last Kyosho here is the Lotus Europa. And this is a funky one because it has, it has a livery from a cartoon show, a Japanese cartoon. I think it was called Mecha Doc. Uh, I'll have to look up the review of that one. I can't remember. But that was a really ugly car, the Lotus Europa. But it's quite interesting. I believe it had a fiberglass body. And it's a mid end, mid rear. Well, it's a rear engine vehicle, mid rear. I guess you'd call it. It's just such an ugly car. I would consider this probably an ugly car as well. <laughs> and I think a lot of people might consider the the 7 uh, an ugly car as well. But I just like them because they're light, they're nimble. The principles of uh, Colin Chapman, the founder of Lotus and stuff. Light weight vehicles are better. And that's generally true for fuel efficiency and performance. As usual, Mini GT is uh, doing a great job. Uh, this this is where Kyosho left off, pretty much. They've taken over the reins as far as the F1 cars go. Um, yeah, this is this is better than a Kyosho F1 car, possibly. I guess it depends on the livery. The Kyosho still stand up to the test of time, but their F1 cars seem to always have exposed axle ends, so that's one really annoying drawback of the Kyoshos unless they have black wheels. Alright, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next Mini GT review. Bye.